Good morning, everybody. About 8 o'clock. Back to do some work on the front balance. Today is going to be the concentration of the um, hammer and dolly work and metal shrinking disc work. And I'm also going to use some new dry guide coat. See how that works to help me find my lows and highs. I'll show you how I do that as I uh, go through this stuff. But I'm going to try to continue to smooth this, this portion out in here. Try to get those bumps and dings out as best as I can and then start getting the back and epoxy primer those little brackets there get them cleaned up again now that they've been uh, de rustized and get epoxy on those things get those welded in and then probably get back over to the balance over here all day so hopefully we'll get a lot of work done alright so this is the front balance it's upside down but it obviously sits on the very very front and bottom of the car this portion here over all the years has gotten beat up pretty well so I've been working on this for a couple days, a couple visits, to try and knock these dents out of here. It's coming along okay, but if you can see in the shade and the shadow, maybe you can see like a shiny spot here and a more dull spot here. And I've done that with sandpaper, but it's a little hard to see sometimes. So what else they make, and this is mainly used for paint preparation to my understanding, but I'm going to try it today to see how it works here. This is a guide coat. It's a very, very light black powder very light like almost like a carbon powder um, seems like it's going to make an absolute mess everywhere so I'm wearing gloves and uh, and I'd highly recommend that so you get this little foam pad it's like a pad that you almost would wax your car with and then you can see in here those cutouts so underneath that is the powder so it doesn't appear that the cap comes off it's really clean right now because I haven't used it at all, so I'm just kind of guessing that what I'll do is probably put the cap back on, shake this up, and I'll bring the powder into the pad. And then simply run that powder over top of the surface and then hit it with a light scuff of sandpaper. And the black powder where your low spots are will stick and where the high spots are, high spots are will get wiped away with the sandpaper. So I'm going to give that a shot and see how it goes. Yeah, so I shook, shook that up and you can see the stuff on there. Alright, well that's not sticking at all. Alright, well that didn't work at all. So maybe because it's so smooth that it's not sticking, or maybe I'm just not using it right, I'll look into it a little bit. I didn't do any research because I figured it's just powder, how hard can it be? So it's not sticking at all. So. Again, that's why he come to this place to go, hey, let's watch Fisher mess everything up. And that way we don't waste our money and waste our time on doing something that doesn't work. So anyway, I'll just use the sandpaper now, try to knock off the highs and the lows. Then I'm going to use a shrinking disc to see if I can get some of these dents out. Alright, so I'm going to concentrate on this area right in here. The lows will be the shiny part because the sandpaper hasn't touched them and scuffed them up. The highs will be the not so shiny part or the scratchy part because that's where the sandpaper is touched. Now the shrinking disc works on bringing down the highs. So I'm going to heat the highs up a little bit. Try to find some especially high spots probably in this crown right here. And then just quench and cool like I did with the bonnet. And we'll see if we can bring some of that stuff in. Alright, so I don't know if you can see that discoloration in here in the, in the lines, but I had some residual stuff on my sanding disc, and it cut a whole bunch of stuff into this, or my shrinking disc, I should say, on the, on the edge. So I can really feel that. So that's kind of a bummer. I took this and just cleaned up the, the edge of the shrinking disc. I'm going to hit the metal now and see if that comes out at all. Not really. So that cut right into that. Not too bad. Nothing that a little bit of work won't take out. A little bit of filler. But, uh, but yeah, it's kind of a bummer.
That right, worked pretty well right there. That's pretty uh, pretty good now. Got a pretty good high spot right here, right in between those two. If you can see those two shiny spots, right in between that crease, that's a pretty good high spot. I'll knock that down and then see what that does for me and then I'll probably work on some hammer and dolly here. So yeah, important safety tip. Make sure that face of the stainless steel shrinking disc is nice and clean. <laughs> See, especially to here, it moved that shiny spot kind of shrunk a little bit as it moved into more of a kidney shape. They are playing with water here, obviously. So, before you go locking a whole rag full of water on top, just pay attention that your water that you leave is not going to get anywhere that you don't want it to get any nooks and crannies or anything like that. Fortunately, I'm just on the face of a panel here, but. It's starting to come out real nice. It's amazing that thing makes that much of a difference. Pretty good high spot right there. I'll knock that guy down. Even though I said I'd do that and then get the hammer and dolly work, but knock that guy down. Alright. So nice little low spot here. Little low spot here. These are probably the worst, obviously, where you can see the shiny part. Work on bringing them up. Just a uh, simple hammer and dolly. I had mentioned that I had new hammers on the way. I got one of them on uh, Thursday, I think. This is that guy. So, standard face, but very short and stubby. So. I'm hoping what this will allow me to do is get in between the doors and knock those dents out that I've got on the face of the doors, get in between the door skin and the back of the door. So, um, found it on eBay, it's like uh, 30 bucks or something like that. So again, these things aren't cheap, you think $30 for a hammer, but uh, especially, you know, one with not a whole lot of metal to it, but they are, they are really nice and you can tell the quality difference. I'm going to be doing some off dolly work here because I don't want to I don't want to uh, stretch the metal at all. So I'll put the dolly around the peripheral of the dent and smack on the dent to try to bring that portion up. Try from behind with the ding spoon like I'd done on the door face and tapping it. See if that gives me anything really hard to get in there. All right, so I'm going to start to come out pretty good. Pretty good deep spot right there, though. Again, what I'm doing, taking the dolly, sticking it, trying to match the curve up as best I can, put some pressure on the back there, smacking it down here, and trying to bring it up. All right, I'm real happy with that. Problem with this stuff is it's so hard to see because it's so subtle. I'll try and give you like a before and after shot of the of the angles with the with the video. Take some images, but uh, the this spot that was pretty shiny is pretty much all gone. Couple spots here, one going this way, one going this way. Probably can get them out with a spoon. That's really light. That's pretty good. Happy with that. All right, a couple high spots right there, right there that I want to try and knock out real quick. All right, I'm gonna work on this off camera a little bit. Give me some, uh, give me some time to play around here. I'm not bore you. So this was, uh, this is coming out pretty good. No shrinking disc work here, just hammer and dolly work. 
pretty good shot right here. So what I've been doing, getting it over on this side so I can feel it because obviously this is the face. Turning it like this, lining up on the inside where my dent is on this side and then using the hammer from this side. Not really using a dolly a whole lot. Um, so again, pretty good spot right here. So I'll find that on the other side. It looks to be right about there. So get the guy clamped to the table. Pick a hammer and just hammer. Now if you can see, I'm not always that good at this. I'm still trying to develop the technique a little bit. But instead of just hammering down, like you would hammer a nail to try to run off a little bit and either go to one end or the other end or up or down and just kind of try to spread the metal out instead of just pounding it straight down, so to speak. So again, that's a, that's a technique that I'm, I'm still working on. Slow and tedious work. It's a pretty good low spot right there. I want to work on that guy. I think what I got here is just a general low spot. Big. Like this size. Just barely feel, feel that run of your hand over it. But I think I'm getting all the local areas, but I think right about in here there's a pretty good low spot. So I'm going to turn this puppy over, smack it around in here, try to focus right on this, this port right in here to try and bang it out. I think I'm gonna go with that. So I'll go off camera here and get this thing cleaned up the rest of the way and, uh, and move on. Got most of the balance cleaned up. What I'm doing now is fitting these brackets. You can see in the top there, those dots, those black dots, those were where the old spot welds were. I filled all those in so I could re-spot weld it. So what I did is I still got the holes on the top here. You can see where I drilled out the spot welds. What I did is I fit the bracket essentially where it used to be, clamp her down, and then across the bottom here mark three more dots where I'm going to drill in holes to do spot welds from this side. If you remember I essentially cut this bracket right about here, put the whole bottom new bottom piece on because it was all rusted out. I'm not going to worry about this weld stuff here, this remnant welds. I'm going to hand paint this all in epoxy. I'll do the same thing on the other side, get the holes drilled in. Then I'm going to get ready to mix up some epoxy. It's got about a 30 minute induction time, so we'll wait on that. I'll get these holes drilled in, do the same thing on the other side, and get everything hand painted up. About 11.45 or so, I'm finished up with two coats of epoxy primer in the various areas that I needed to put to get the brackets welded back in. Got the brackets hanging over there too. Paints on the back side, can't see it. So I've moved on to the bonnet. And again, still uh, cleaning over there. A lot of nooks and crannies. Got quite a bit of uh, epoxy left. If I can get to the point, what I would like to do is paint, again using the hand brush, the tops of the wheel arches and those uh, areas inside, like the underside of this, this panel here and uh, both sides of that and get in underneath it's uh, it's pretty tight and tricky in there you can see it's all dark so I've got some degreaser in there that purple power stuff that I use and uh, just gonna hit it with scotch bright prads and, and whatnot and try to get in there and get it cleaned up and again I'm not going for perfection in there more so just to try and get some of the grime and grease off and then clean it well enough that I get good paint adhesion probably not the best image due to lack of light but I'm in the bowels of the bonnet here and you can see this is the front top of the wheel arch I'm looking through the headlight this is uh, what's this driver's son I don't know whatever but you can see all the little areas in there a lot of tight spots and everything not uh, not incredibly easy to get to but you can see there's some corrosion right there at least the paint's starting to come off I don't, I don't intend on repairing that but uh, a lot of bul bubbling paint and everything in here this is over here on the other side um, same kind of spot same kind of stuff 
same general area. A little bit more clean because I got uh, some more attention on this one a little while ago, but uh, still needs work. So that's going to be probably encompass quite a few hours here, but that's what I'm going to be working on. About uh, 210 or so, and I got the epoxy primer on the spots that I wanted to get at on the bonnet. Again, it was mainly the hard to get to places that I didn't think I'd be able to get to with the spray gun. You can see it under there. Um, in there a little bit, you can see it's all gray. Not the best job in there. One, it's really hard to get to. And two, it's I couldn't clean it up real well, but you know, it, it's on there, so it, I don't think it'll make it worse. Um, but you can see on the bottom of the, of the arch there. The other place I got was underneath the, up underneath the wheel arch there, the fender flare. But that was about it as far as the epoxy went. I'm pretty sure I'm going to be able to adequately get everywhere else, or at least close to it. Maybe the only other place I'm kind of concerned with is on top of the, uh, on top of the headlight um, rings or whatever you want to call that on the inside, if you can see in there. I'm afraid that I'm not going to be able to get all the way around on that with the spray gun very well, so cross that bridge when I come to it. But for now, uh, everything's drying. So I got the balance drying over there. I'm going to leave that to dry overnight. I think I'm coming back tomorrow, so I'll weld those brackets back in. All right, well, not quite working the way that I thought it would. So again, uh, I need to do some studying. And uh, otherwise, I think I'm going to call it a day. And just like that, it's Monday. Back over here to continue work. So I forgot to paint the one portion of the bracket that goes and attaches under here on the, uh, the front balance. So I got two coats of epoxy on those real quick. So hopefully by the end of the night, I'll get that welded in. In the meantime, while I was waiting for the paint to dry, decided to start taking out the wire clip brackets. There's six of them in here. This is the very front leading edge of the bonnet. Again, it's upside down. But you can see the holes here. I've gotten four out of the six out. The problem is, is when you get into this area, you've got from the front no access, and from the back that the angle of this um, bumper grill support thing, I can't remember what exactly this piece is called, prevents a very easy to easy to get the drill up and down so what I do is I have a 90 degree attachment on my Dremel here just with a regular drill bit and that fits in there pretty well and that's what I'm using to get these two edge brackets out so I got all those little wire clips made essentially just cutting them out of metal and uh, I'm gonna paint them up so you can see I've got them all on this kind of holding thing here so I'll get all these both sides of this painted with epoxy primer they all get covered with uh, shrink tubing just to prevent wire chafing or anything so I'm not real concerned about cosmetically that these look good. Got the bonnet on the sawhorse. You can see the straps and that's just to give me some some leverage for putting the dolly up underneath uh, in the contour and trying to, to pound against that. So I'm going to work from the top. I did, uh, I mentioned in a previous clip that I needed to do some studying. I did a little bit last night uh, between the shrinking disc and the holler, Heimer and dolly work. We'll see how this goes. The camera doesn't like focusing on this solid gray field here very much, so I'm not too sure how close I'm going to be able to get to show you what's going on, but uh, but I'll, I'll try and try and do a good a good enough uh, example so you can see what I'm doing. I'm going to start metal working the boot lid now. Got it on the sawhorse. Got it strapped down to try to provide some some support for it. Unfortunately, it's uh, not working out real well for me. I might have to come up with a different solution here. But I use that black powder to try and bring out the highs and the lows a little bit, hit it with sandpaper. So I'll try to explain to you what you're seeing on camera. So where it's really light, like this spot here, this spot here, this spot here, which is very shiny, at least to me. It may look opposite on camera, I can't quite tell. Um, that's bare metal there. This the really, really light gray are my high spots. The darker areas are my low spots. So I'm going to use the railroad dolly here, or the general purpose dolly, this guy. It's got a nice um, crown to it, nice general crown that goes this way. And that's how the boot lid goes. It falls down as you get towards the edges. So in the center, it's the high spot, and it falls down from there. And it's a pretty subtle curve. So this railroad dolly will, will work out well for that. 
And what I'm going to do is I'll push up on the lows and smack down on the highs to try to make those two meet. My object here is to not do on dolly. I don't want you don't want to hear this. All right, so if I stick this under here, you can hear that. Yeah, I don't want to do that because I don't want to stretch the metal. So I'm going to lift up on this. <coughs> the dolly pushing up on this low spot. Smack. Smack down on that high spot. Hopefully you can hear the difference in that metal there. Use your hand a lot on this. You can really, I can really feel that high and low spot right there. The problem is here is I'm running out of room a little bit. So I got the toe dolly here. That gives me a little bit of a curve here, well a lot of a curve, but I want to try to match as much as I can the curvature of this. So the problem here, and you can't see that, let me shift the camera here a little bit. So the problem here is I got a high spot right here. If you can see that, kind of lighter gray. I got a low spot right here, which isn't very low, but you can definitely feel it. So again, I'm going to push up on that high, or excuse me, push up on that low, try to match in the curve a little bit, push down, and down on that high. All right, so again, if you can see these spots right here, I'm like getting like Ellen. I can't do anything in this garage without glasses. I'm standing right up to the camera so I can see. So yeah, you can see they almost look like a really, really dark gray. That's bare metal there and there and that little smiley face there. Kind of looks like two eyes in the mouth. Anyway, that's low sp or, uh, high spots where I'm picking the metal up. Big old low spot right there. Now you see that little dot there? I worked on that the other day. So what I'll do here now is I'm going to put the dolly right underneath this spot, bang here where there's high spots, bang here, all the way around that. That's like the perfect, the perfect dent. Hopefully, we're picking this up, so let's see how this works for me. Yeah, I think I picked that up and Moved around, let's see. Yep. Alright, you can see hopefully how that came right up. Alright, that's really all I'm doing. Is chasing these, chasing these dents. Trying to get this guy right here. Yep, picked him up. See where that was a big black spot? Now you can see starting to get a little bit of coloration in the middle there. So now, now I start getting creative with Dolly, right? So I've got that little curved spot there. So hopefully I can pick right up. All right, well, I'll call that lucky. That came out good. Pretty good high spot right there. I'll take that down with the shrinking disc. Right, all these high spots are all going to get worked with the shrinking disc. All right, so it worked pretty well for bringing these high spots down, but unfortunately, that's still a pretty good low. So. Nothing we ain't, we ain't. Nothing we haven't done. So I'm just gonna, again, in this particular instance, just pick up with a dolly on that low spot and hammer it around. Mm -hmm. 
moving down the panel, you can see these two spots right here, I think. They look especially, at least from me looking at it, now that I got out of the shadow, they look very shiny. Uh, the reason that is because they're low spots, so I haven't scuffed up the epoxy primer, which comes in relatively shiny anyway. So again, these are pretty big. Kidney shaped one here, big low spot here. Same process. Um, dolly underneath, tack down around the outside. So that's what I'm going to work on now. All right, so I switched the dinging spoon a little bit here to try to bring this up. Seems to have worked pretty well. Now I'm running, running them into right now. You can see this really shiny spot. That's exact where that bar is underneath. So I'm gonna have to reposition the, the bar and um, try to get a little bit better. I may try to do away with the straps too and see if I can provide enough oomph to it to not have to use them. All right, we're gonna start working our way up here, like I said, there's all sorts of stuff going on in here. Take sandpaper to it. See what it looks like. Wow. You know what that's called? Hours of my life. Right there. All right, well, same approach. start on this guy adjust the camera here for you so it looks like whatever hit nailed it really good right here kind of lightens up almost nothing in here and then it hits hits it again pretty good right there if you can see those I know those marks aren't the best so that's essentially the path that I'll follow and try to reverse it here Alright, calling it a night. A lot of uh, 
a lot of good work tonight. I learned a lot about metalworking and and just kind of how stuff goes. Obviously, there's still a lot of work to do on this boot lid, probably more than I had originally suspected, but um, but it, it's progress and it's coming out. I'm still going to struggle with this crease here, I think, but uh, it definitely looks better than it did, feels better than it did. Still some, some big dents there, but, uh, but I think I, at least I understand a little bit more now. Practice makes perfect, I guess, so I'll get a lot more practice on that guy. I did not weld the brackets in. I figured I'd let it let those dry up for a little while. I'm not in any hurry. Uh, otherwise, I got the um, little metal tabs there that you can see hanging there. They're all painted. I'll let them dry too, obviously, and get those installed at some point. Probably not right away because they'll just stick out and slice my arm up and stuff as I'm trying to clean. So I won't put those in until right before I'm ready to paint. So I am going out of town, so it'll be a little bit before my next video, but I hope to see you guys maybe middle of next week. It's going to be a little bit more than a week. But otherwise, um, thank you very much for watching. Thank you for liking, and of course, thank you for subscribing. And please uh, please visit the website, www.roundtailrestoration.com. Got to get that updated. I'm uh, getting a little behind there, but uh, I'll try to get that done this week before I go away. So have a good rest of your week. Even though it's only Monday, hopefully your Monday wasn't too miserable. And uh, I'll see you guys soon. Have a good night. Cheers.